call me Crazy Joe, but now they can call me Fat Man. What up? Welcome back once again to the Necro Zoo. I am Bones. And in this one, let's go ahead and add one more figure to my McFarlane DC Multiverse collection. Now, today we will take a look at Supergirl. Now, this is a gold label figure from Target, which is actually where I picked this figure up from. Uh, I think the Backyard Legend sent a message that there was a sale going on, and I went ahead and ordered two of these Supergirl figures for $15 each. And it does kind of puzzle me because for some reason, people are going all crazy online on the secondary market asking for astronomical prices <laughs> for this figure when you can easily go to Target and pick it up. Now, far be it from me to tell anybody how to spend their money, but just looking at these prices kind of makes me laugh because who would buy these? I mean, if a figure for me costs more than double, I kind of, you know, pump the brakes a little bit <laughs> and reassess, you know, if I really want it that bad. But to each their own. I mean, people are out there trying to make a buck. And if you want to pick it up or maybe they're trying to advertise to people who don't have access to these figures, which is fine. But I would say, as always, shop wisely. Now, I did end up picking up a third one of these. And I think now on the Target page, they might be sold out because when I ordered this last one, it, it said something like uh, only a few left, or I think it was the last one or something like that. So maybe getting pretty close to where this one will be out of stock, at least on the website, but you can always go in store and hunt for her. Now she does look pretty devastating in the packaging, but let's go ahead and take a closer look at her. But first, she does come with your standard black DC Multiverse stand. Now, of course, these are not really needed, but sometimes they do come in useful. She also comes with her data file card. On the front, you do have a classic image of Supergirl from the comics. Now, of course, Supergirl goes way back in the lore of DC Comics. Tons of versions of her, tons of stories with her. It is awesome that we have already, I think, received about three Supergirls from McFarlane. And another thing is that there's lots of renditions of her. So you could go classic, you could go modern, you can go other earthly. So pretty cool character. Love me some Kara Zarel. And on the back, you do have some information. Pretty sweet. We will hold on to this. Now, she also does come with a flight stand. Now, a lot of people always complain about flying figures that do not come with flight stands. But in all honesty, I have hundreds of these and I, <laughs> I basically do not use them at all. Uh, so they just go in a box with uh, the rest of them. So let's go ahead and take a closer, more detailed look at the figure. Oh, this has been a point of contention amongst collectors and, you know, people taking a look at this figure. Uh, some cool things they did, some pretty bad things that they did, and some things that are easily fixed, at least for me, that I saw right away. And I kind of could tell that I would be able to, you know, add my own touch. Plus, I saw so many people reviewing this one and having a battle on, <laughs> on the interwebs about you know, custom legs, you know, changing up the skirt. I also saw my boy Toy Gains. He had a hard time. He wanted her to look a certain way, and it took him a, a while to get it to where he was satisfied with her. So I wanted to take, you know, my own stab at her and see what I could do with her. But for right now, let's just take a look at the regular release. Because, of course, there are some things that as always, I enjoy and some things that I do not really like with figures. So let's take a look at her first impressions. Here is one thing we do need to understand. And that is that if you're just a regular, you know, consumer, an average, you know, buyer, you don't really 
see a lot of details or a lot of comic accuracy in the figures. You just see the figure in the box on the shelf and you want it or you don't. So I do know that there are more collectors, you know, uh, supporting this line. And I do agree with that. But we also must remember that a larger majority of the sales of these actually go to just random people walking down the toy aisle. So for them, when they see this figure, they see a Supergirl. And that is all that they are really interested in or care about. While we see a figure... <laughs> that isn't necessarily perfect or the way we would want her to be released. But for, you know, just looking at her straight off, it does represent Supergirl pretty well. We'll get into the details later on in the video. But first impressions, just your regular, normal Supergirl figure. More of a classic take on her. Let's take a look at the head scope now. Here's one thing that <laughs> I'm not a big fan of, and that is, if you look at her eyes, she looks pretty weird. She's weird looking. She's looking out into the, you know, infinity. She looks like she's, you know, doesn't have anything on her mind. I'm kind of like, hey, I'm over here. You know, she's just looking out there. And that's where I think that side eye actually helps sometimes with figures because I'm not necessarily saying like side eye all the way to one direction. I'm just kind of saying a little bit of glance to one direction, you know, not completely. Actually gives the figures a little bit more life and gives them more character without even having to, you know, pose them or anything. And that is just by looking at their eyes. Because the, the first time I ever saw that like zombie stare, that lifeless eye, Ever since then, I have not been able to unsee it. All the figures that I see that have these like creepy eyes, right away they stick out to me. And of course, sadly, she does have a little bit of that dead eye going. Um, but besides that, pretty, you know, normal feminine head sculpt. Like the hair, the way it's swirling around. If you look at the box on the back, to me, that represents more of a youthful supergirl and this one i'm not sure just has a more of like a realistic uh live action feel to it that might be the reason why they did a platinum version of this figure but it looks more like in the color scheme of the supergirl from the tv series but as i said before basically if you look at her right away she just looks like your basic supergirl now take a look at the articulation um not too much going on mostly because of the hair so while you do have right to left and a little bit of movement around you could tilt a little bit you can turn her all the way to the left with the way her hair is molded out but besides that you don't get a lot of range it's going to be really hard for her to look up for flight poses unless you do some modding I could look into that maybe in the future, but for right now, this is fine for me. It's not really a big problem, at least for me. So she does have limited articulation because of the hair sculpt. But let's take a look at the waist articulation. You do got side to side. You got the full turtle twirl. You got a lower waist swivel, upper chest swivel. You could twist her, get him in some action poses. Um, she has a slight crunch forward, not too much, but it is there. And of course you can lean her back very well, which is where you can actually get her in flight poses. Although her head does not lean back, the back tilt in the abdomen actually helps that out. Pretty cool. Take a look at the shoulder. You got that basic socket and bushing shoulder joint from McFarlane. A lot of cool range, bicep swivel, double jointed elbows look pretty good, and then straighten her out. Now, this is reused from the Catwoman figure, and you could kind of see the cut there that's on the top of her bicep. And in all honesty, I kind of came in knowing, knowing this and thinking that I wasn't going to like it, but you can't really see it. Like, if, if I could and it stuck out to me, 
I would actually admit it, but it from far away or, or you know, posing her, you can't really tell that it has that cut in the sleeve. In fact, you could kind of say that it's just a design in her suit because a lot of versions of her in the comics have like a little bit of sculpting detail or design in her sleeves. So honestly, I thought I would be pretty bummed out about it, but it's not a big deal. That is the least of all the atrocities <laughs> that they did on this figure. So moving down, this is one thing I am a big fan of and I'm barely starting to come around to it. And that is these like thinner sculpted out wrist joints. If you put them in the perfect position, they make an awesome, cool line silhouette from the wrist into the hand. It just looks perfect. I mean, you got to mess with it a little bit and get it in the right direction. But once you do get it, it just looks really, really clean. I do like how this one, they didn't make it a skin tone. They made it a color and it does kind of look like the costume ends right, you know, past her wrist, which is really cool. So I'm starting to come around to these wrist joints. They look really, really clean. So that is a big plus, you know, for me. On the other side, you have the same thing. And of course, as usual, you have the wrist articulation. Four ways from McFarlane. Now you can get her in a T pose pretty simply. Get her arms above her head, even though her hair is kind of big. Pretty sweet. Now moving down, this is one thing I really like. And that is the S shield that they put on her. It is painted. It doesn't have any type of, you know, sculpt or embossed parts to it, but it is really clean and the paint they use is really vibrant. So I really like that. It actually looks really good. And you go, you go down past the waist and to the top of the skirt where they did a really nice gold belt on there. So happy about that. Now we will go down <laughs> to the legs and that is where we come into a lot of the problems. First of all, the skirt, I am not a big fan of. It just looks too, you know, poofy and puffed out there. Um, there's different reasons why they do design choices. Maybe it has to do with Warner Brothers or being in the toy aisle. But there's a lot of versions of Supergirl that give us a little bit more of an appealing look that a lot of people actually prefer. And let's not beat around the bush, you know? I mean, showing more skin and looking a little bit more sexier. It is what it is. And this just looks a little bit like uh, it's time to go to church or something like that. Just completely covered up, which, you know, it is it is what it is. That's, you know, sometimes Warner Brother has a lot of say in what McFarlane does. And another thing I don't like about the skirt is it really restricts the movement of the legs. You can barely get her to move her legs. She does have thigh swivel, but you can't even see what's actually going on <laughs> under there. So yeah, not a great design on the way they did the skirt. Um, I mean, you can move her legs out. She has double jointed knees. Up and down at the ankle. Right to left, rocker, and toe articulation. Taking a look at the lower body, that is one more thing that I do not like. And that is, if you look under there, she has the cut of the thigh-high boots from Catwoman. And they just painted all her legs red. But we pretty much knew all of this, except for when we saw the promo images, we weren't sure if there was at least some kind of skin under the skirt. But sadly, the more people saw of her, the more they saw that it was just <laughs> all painted red, which is not cool. Now, one thing I am surprised about is actually the boots or the, you know, feet. I thought I was going to hate them from the promo images to seeing other people review them. I just thought that the ball joint was like too big and it made it look really bulky and clunky. And I just, you know, didn't like the way it looked. But actually, now that I have it in hand, it doesn't look that bad. While I would prefer a more slimmer down, smaller, petite boot, 
it's not actually that bad. And of course, as a lot of times it happens, once you get it in hand, it completely changes the view of the figure and you actually get to see it for yourself up close. And it doesn't bother me as much as I thought it would bother me. Take a look at her from the bottom. No tread and no identifying marks. Moving up the back. You could see the cool sculpt work that they did on the boots. But of course, these are from the Catwoman figure. And going up the bottom of the skirt, you do know that they just really messed it up in the execution of the legs for this figure. Now, here's another thing that sometimes I like and sometimes I don't like, and that is the cloth cape. Now, a lot of people prefer cloth capes, and that is fine. I'm more of the, you know, mindset that if it looks good and that is how the figure is produced, I'm fine with it. But I just don't like when the capes look really, like, cluttered up and too, like, bungee around the figure. Uh, this one looks actually passable. Uh, not too too thick, pretty thin, and also I did find out how I like it to be placed over her shoulders. Uh, I will show that later on when I show my custom figure. But if you just look at it like this, it looks fine. There's nothing wrong with it. I just prefer a more uh, sleeker form-fitting cape around the shoulders. But that's about it. That's, you know, Supergirl, like I said. A lot of people would just buy this figure and take her as a regular Supergirl. But of course, us as collectors and fans of DC, we want something just a little better and more appealing to the eye. I think that's what everybody was looking for. Now, let's compare to some other figures. I did want to stand her next to the unmasked Batwoman Beyond. And that was basically just to get some idea of scale with other female figures. So not a big comparison, but I just wanted to kind of see how she sits with this figure. Yeah, looks pretty good. And then we'll bring out Catwoman, which is actually who she shares a lot of parts with. Now, if you put these two next to each other, you can see the parts that they use, the legs. One thing that kind of helped me change my mind about Supergirl's boots was that the, the ankle ball joint is actually the exact same ball joint from Catwoman, but where they gave her some stiletto, you know, really slender boots that really cleaned it up down towards the bottom. With her, they gave her those like clunky, you know, <laughs> shoes, and that's where the difference is. So it isn't necessarily the ball joint. It was actually the shoe part that make Supergirls look a little bit wider and thicker. While Catwoman's, they gave her some, you know, high heel stiletto boots, which really painted a more narrow line to her feet. So they could have actually given those same boots to Supergirl. Then of course it would not necessarily be comic accurate because Supergirl <laughs> does not wear high heels. She usually just has regular superhero boots that's basically what she wears. So then also let's bring in the Injustice Supergirl. And when you put these two together, these were actually the you know size of, of boots that I would like for Supergirl to have. You know, just a little bit more narrow size and just looks better with a female figure. This one, this Supergirl figure actually has a lot going for her, uh, except the haircut, but I mean, it is accurate to the Injustice games. Can't fault them for that. That's how she looks in the game. But it is pretty cool to have an alternate Supergirl for your collection. And finally, <laughs> what we basically all, you know, come for. And that is my redone, repainted, customed Supergirl figure. Now, I wanted to try my best to get what I wanted to see from a Supergirl figure. Um, I saw a lot of people's different takes on her and I had my own ideas of what I wanted to go for. Now, when I was looking up images, I basically wanted to go for that sort of essentials uh, where she has that cut skirt that's more like a V taper and exposes more leg. And then I kind of knew I was going to use the same Catwoman legs. I was just going to 
paint the flesh tone on them. And I had an idea about the head sculpt, which really stuck with me. So starting from the top, if you compare her to the standard release, you can see where that standard release has like a little bit of shade around the eyes. But I think that that shade should have actually been like makeup or liner to like darken and smoky up her eyes. So what I did is I actually added black around the eyes of my figure just to replicate sort of those eyelashes uh, basically from the image on the box is basically what I used as inspiration. Now, another thing I did actually was I mixed up some flesh tone and thinned out her eyebrows to where they were not so thick and prominent, actually thinned them out and made them lose a little bit of how they were standing out to me. And then I added some ruby red to her lips. And this actually makes her look a lot better, at least in my eyes now. Actually, I like my uh, females to not wear too much makeup, but there is something to say about makeup. It does give you that little, you know, added spice to make you look a little bit better. And it definitely worked out for this Supergirl. Now, the next thing I knew I was going to have to do is I knew I wanted to go with a bare midriff. Now, I can't remember where I saw it, but I saw somebody gave her a bare midriff. And luckily, I had a extra figure of the last night on Earth Wonder Woman uh, just for fodder. She was just laying around with no head. So I went ahead and took that apart and added that midriff to this figure basically taking her <laughs> in a whole nother direction it just just by doing that you can actually see how different she looks from the original release just you know like i said takes her to a whole different space showing that little bit of flesh really helps then i had to tackle the skirt now i'm not a big um video you know how to do customizing and stuff like that i just it, it takes so much for me to actually do the work that by the time I start doing it, I forget about filming it and all that. But I did get you guys some pictures. And what it was, was I took it all apart, found the weird undercarriage that is actually under the skirt. Uh, some sort of <laughs> crazy medieval crotch that they gave her. Now, I did get rid of that. I was not going to use that. And I did have to find a certain, um, you know, that carriage that holds the legs together for McFarlane figures. I'm pretty sure I used the Last Night on Earth one just so it would fit with the midriff. And once I put that on there, I did find her some uh, bloomers to cover up <laughs> to cover up her uh, natal cleft and give her some, you know, modesty. And then I went ahead and painted the legs, the flesh tone. Um, the next thing I wanted to do actually was attack the skirt. Now, I wasn't sure what I was getting myself into because I didn't know if trimming it was going to change the shape of it or, you know, cause any big disruptions in the way it fit around the figure. But surprisingly, I was able just to make a line, sort, sort of get some reference from different figures online that I saw and just cut it and shape it to give her that, you know, more classic Supergirl look and just a, a nicer more appealing look in my eyes and once i did that surprisingly all the parts fit back together everything fit perfectly i didn't really have to mod or grind anything down slip the skirt on and it was almost perfect it just fit perfectly now what you get is actually a figure that you can manipulate and move the legs a lot more no paint rub to speak of for the flesh color. Get her in flight poses. And she's just now a more stunning figure. So with the eye paint, the mid drift, the skirt modifications, and painting the flesh tone on the legs. Now she, <laughs> she is one of my favorite figures. I cannot say enough how much I really enjoy her now. Uh, not too much work. I, I just had to know what I was doing and trust myself. But I really love the way she came out. Awesome, awesome Supergirl figure. Uh, wish McFarlane would have released her like this. But then again, <laughs> every, again, everybody might really be paying 
uh, above 40 bucks for her if that's how he released her. So I know it kind of blows where you have to mod a figure to make it the way you want, but it is better to mod an actual figure than to have to just, you know, build one from scratch, which is a pretty daunting task. And what we get with these figures, and, you know, mind you, for 20 bucks or less, is the ability to have somewhere we could start and then make her what we want. You know, not necessarily what Warner Brothers wants, but what us as collectors want. So I'm really on the fence. I mean, she's cool in the standard release, but am I happy that I picked up two and was able to mod the other one? Yes, I am. She looks great. She looks awesome posing. You get a lot more range. She just basically blows the regular McFarlane release out of the water. So really happy with her now. Awesome figure. Any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Oh, before we go, I did want to bring out my definitive Superman. I do have a video on how I made him on the channel. And they look awesome together. This is great. Although, <laughs> this Superman is another time where I took what McFarlane gave us and made my definitive version of Kal-El. Now he could be next to his cousin and they look great together. But you guys, keep hunting out there. Keep collecting. Keep customizing. And I will see you on the next one. Crazy Joe, but now they can call me Batman.